Hello and welcome. My name is Darko Buteritz. I'm the music director of the Tallahassee Symphony Orchestra and I'm here in the heart of Tallahassee in beautiful chain of parks. Uh, one of the my favorite spots in our community, a place where uh, we are kept company by beautiful century-old uh, live oak uh, decorated with Spanish moss. A place where we have markets, where we have uh, events, but today we're actually welcoming uh, some very special guests. With me today um, is our soloist for the upcoming concert, cellist Joshua Roman, as well as uh, our principal cellist from the orchestra, uh, from the Tallahassee Symphony, uh, Greg Sauer. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. So, Joshua, you are one of the most illustrious uh, soloists we've welcomed uh, here to town. Uh, you've played all over the world. Um, one of the things that I love about you is you really stretch the boundary of what being a musician in today's day and age is. Can you tell us a little bit about all the interests you have as a musician and as a cellist? Thank you. Thank you for having me here. It's uh, my first time in Tallahassee. It's nice to get to see a little bit more of the city than a hotel room, um, which is really nice to be here. Thank, thank you. So, yes. I long ago started playing the cello and fell in love with it, but I'm a very curious person. I had many opportunities, uh, some of them that were created by not being in a kind of ecosystem that was built around classical music like you have in New York City or Chicago. I grew up in Oklahoma, so when I wanted to make music with people, often it was a band instead of a string quartet and uh, maybe church music instead of orchestra music. So because of the combination of my curiosity and my circumstances, I've always explored what it means to be a cellist in every context, um, be it in a park, be it um, in a bar, in a church, at home, and the more that I have experienced direct music making with, with people outside of the concert hall, the more that's informed how I think about music inside of the concert hall and how I look at the tradition. We've all heard of Beethoven, Bach, and Mozart, and we think of them as these big composers, or at least I used to think of them as these big sort of untouchable composers, figures at large that you just couldn't compare to, and their works are kind of wholly as if they fell from the sky without human intervention. But in reality, they were part of a very active musical world, and they lived in their time, they made music in their time, they were all performers, in fact, often more famous as performers in their life than as composers. Bach is one of the best examples of that. Bach was a famous organist, improviser, uh, much more so than a composer when he was alive. So I like to think that by writing my own music, by engaging with musicians in other styles and learning how to improvise jazz, working with electronica DJs, rock bands, um, you name it, I'm actually living the tradition that the great composers of classical music um, also lived, and in that way, becoming even closer to their music. So I've brought a few pieces here, um, we've sort of co-curated a program together, and because of that, essentially, I get to be a performer, a curator, and a composer on one program. Yes, this is uh, one of the most exciting uh, things that I've uh, found in working with you is um, we have a silver lining in 2020 uh, pandemic situation that for the first time we're able to bring soloists like yourself to really show off your passions to show off um, your desires uh, as a musician and that's really translated when we created the program it was an incredibly dynamic and exciting process typically a soloist would come uh, to town and you know you would be performing one maybe two pieces and here we have you i think on eight nine different works where you're performing and it, it stretches the range of music stretches we have we start with music of the baroque with uh, both johann sebastian and cte bach um, 
there is Vivaldi, but then we come all the way, not just to the 20th, but to the 21st century with your music and um, music of three amazing uh, female composers who are uh, being very creative right, right in this very day. So uh, lead us, I know the, how, how it all happened, but lead us a little bit through the thought process of crafting this program. I, I suppose maybe one way we can say is it really is about the love of the cello, of the instrument of the cello as being the root of the program. I would agree, yes. The cello is definitely at the heart of this program, more than just being a soloist. Um, there's a lot of music that engages more than one cello kind of in the spotlight. And it really, as you say, started because we can't do a big concerto with a big orchestra. And rather than pretend, rather than do an arrangement of the Dvorak concerto, which would surely fail to meet expectations, we thought, well, why not just look at what we actually have and what would be amazing and even better um, in that in this situation that we're in. I love this approach. Um, don't pretend it's not what it is. Just make what it is awesome. And so finding a way to tap into that tradition, the excitement of that tradition with the CPP Bach and also the Massine pieces that are recognized, if not by um, sound, at least by name. And there's such for me, it's uh, thinking about that, I, I really wanted to bring out what's special about them and the way for to do that, the way I think, is actually to put them in their context. So we have three old pieces, four, four old pieces out of ten pieces. Only four pieces by dead white men in a, in a program of ten pieces. And I love them! But now they're contextualized. They're, they're from the past and we're playing them because they mean so much to us, because they're so cool that they deserve to be brought forward right now. There's a lot of music like that and in this program you will see it in its context, in its context of today, 2020, here we are. So there are also three pieces that I've written, um, all of them this year. And I have to say, I have to interject and, and say they are absolutely fantastic. I. Um, I can pay the greatest compliment uh, to a composer when the uh, time of music is filled with content. There's pieces, the thing with music that's incredible I find is that uh, time changes. It can seem eternal, something is too long, or it can seem literally that seven minutes passes in a flash. And I felt like that with your music, that the content is so engaging and so exciting. I'm absolutely thrilled to, to, to have you present your music. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very, I'm very grateful for that and to be able to do this. Um, these will be the world premieres of these pieces, which were all written. Uh, they were all written in isolation. Um, actually, the first one is not written in isolation technically, but alone <laughs> with me, my cello, and a recording device. And I, you know, listened to them and wrote them down for the Tallahassee Symphony so that we could have other musicians playing as well rather than just layers of myself. And it's so very exciting to have those brought to life. Um, and we can talk about those in depth a little bit more later maybe. Um, but the other part of the program, you know, we have a nod to the past, to the tradition. We have music that I've written right now. Um, that reflects my own experience as a performer composer living in 2020 and playing the cello. And then we also have a section of the program which features other living perspectives on music today. The three wonderful composers, Carolyn Shaw, Alison Logan Holt, and Gabrielle Lena Frank. And each of those pieces represents a different way of looking at music. There are so many ways to write music and to experience music. Sometimes, as is, as is the case with Carolyn's piece, it's really about the sound. You see something in the in the world or you, you hear something that makes you think of sound a particular way and you just want to capture that. You just want to explore all of the different nuances of that sound and its relationship to another sound. It doesn't have to have uh, something else going on. It's just, it's just an exploration of sound. And the piece builds with its own relationship to itself, not outside of the piece, but within the piece. Then sometimes you have a narrative, as is the case with Allison's piece. Uh, you have a story, and you literally have a section that corresponds to a different part of each story. And then finally with Gabby's piece, a very kind of cultural and folk-derived representation of something that is very evocative and may not be familiar to someone 
hearing it for the first time, but to someone who comes from that culture and understands those rhythms because they are baked into the folk music of that place, that very much has a sense of a sense of place, a sense of home. So three very different approaches to the creation of music, and I think it's uh, wonderful to be able to explore all of that within one program. Well, there is one narrative you left out, which is the final piece of the program uh, really wraps up uh, kind of with a beautiful bow uh, the whole thing, and that's a uh, concerto for two cellos by Vivaldi. Uh, probably the most played double cello concerto that we have in the repertoire. Uh, but what's special about it in this case is that our principal cellist and the other soloist, uh, Greg Sauer, was actually your teacher back when you were a teenager. So it's a bit of a family reunion, a musical family reunion. And uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, both of you, what was that like? What was that first interaction like, both for Josh, for you as, as a student, and Greg as a teacher? What, what was it like working together? Uh, and what is it like now coming back and having a chance to perform together in, in this concert? Josh came into uh, this, this studio playing amazingly at age 14 or 13. And I, I just, I like to brag that I taught him for a couple of years when, uh, when, when I get the chance to brag. But in, in essence, I just did no harm. I said, occasionally I would say, maybe slow that down a bit so, so that I can hear what you're doing. And, uh, and I just let him go. It was an amazing experience to work with. And it's, it, it's really fun to reunite in this way. I've seen you a few times through the years. Happened to be in Boulder when you were there playing. But this is a nice, uh, nice experience. Yes, this is our first time really working together since, um, yeah, it's been a while. I won't say how long. <laughs> but it was, I do remember, um, I had actually studied with a violinist for the first 10 years, and he was a very wonderful teacher who really set me up from the beginning, from age 3 to 13, really set me up well. And then I had a cello teacher in Memphis who was a very sort of old school, I had a cello teacher in Memphis who was a very sort of old school teacher and very by the book and I got the books and I, I loved that. And then it was so refreshing uh, when I started studying with Greg, there is such a thoughtfulness and you can see and hear that, um, such a thoughtfulness to everything. And I think at first I might have been a little thrown because of where I was coming from and because I was you know, such a, an eager kid. But that has really stuck with me, the, the sort of attention to what's actually happening in the moment, not always charging forward, but paying attention to every moment, what's going on. And in some way, also having the cello be a life lesson, to have patience, to pay attention to the details, to sort of let things be where they are and then take them somewhere better rather than always trying to force. And I don't know that you ever tried to articulate those things as a life lesson, but it was very clear to me that there was a philosophical approach that really stuck with me. So it's, uh, I've always been kind of studying with you since, oh, since nice then, I, I like to think. Um, and it's super cool to be sharing the stage right now. And we haven't seen each other enough since that time for me not to still feel like I'm playing for my teacher, so it's, pretty, it's really fun, it's really fun. And Greg, for you, uh, what is it like playing, what is it actually like, let's get a little bit in the weeds, like what is it like uh, doing the Vivaldi together? Uh, what's the dynamic like? It's a, it's a thrill for me. We often, in a, when doing a double concerto, we would get together first before we got together with the group. We didn't do that, there wasn't time. We played it through and it, it went and, and it was great fun. And then we met before the second rehearsal and kind of hashed a few things out. And then for me, it came to life and uh, yes. felt much more uh, at home. And um, because Joshua is, is the artist that he is and is so um, dynamic and creative, 
I'm just constantly bombarded with ideas. Oh, I should try that. I should play it in this part of the world. I should try this. I should, you know, and it's really, it's inspiring. Well, uh, for me, you know, I'm, I'm standing right in front of both of you and I'm loving the musical dialogue that's going on. As you described, you react to each other. And of course, the piece is also written that way. So um, I just love that you take every opportunity to, to have that literally a musical dialogue, true duet, not just playing your part individually and kind of agreeing to something, but it feels that it's living, it feels that it's being created at the moment. It's very spontaneous, almost improvisational in its, in its nature. And it's been a thrill to, to work with you on, on this music. It's, it's a lot of fun, and what you say is, is true. I mean, it really is a team piece. And I, in my part, often get things first, and or I have a little bit more that have all these written for my part. But then Greg will come along with his part, and there's a big opportunity to change something up. And that was very much the practice of the time. And it's really fun. I think every time there's something different, something new. And so rather than having decided, predetermined every note, we've basically just figured out our roles in our relationship and as that grows the improvisation comes together more and more and it's, it's incredibly exciting. It feels very organic. Yeah. Uh, well it, it's a thrill to to have both of you for the concert. Again the concert premieres uh, on Friday uh, October 23rd um, and for tickets uh, you can go to uh, TallahasseeSymphony.org and again, here in the beautiful chain of parks in Tallahassee, it's been a pleasure to welcome you to our town, Joshua. Uh, I'm really looking forward to, to the concert. And uh, again, thank you for gracing our community with your music.